Hey everyone, so I'm Dr. Dai, and in this video, we are going to start by looking at the genome. So life's continuity between cells rests on something called the cell cycle. It's a structured series of events, all right? And it's gonna begin with one parent cell dividing to form two daughter cells. This is followed by further divisions of these daughter cells. These cell cycle mechanisms are conserved among eukaryotes. That means that this is the way it's done for single-celled free-living protists, for plants, animals, fungi, they all follow the same structured series of events. So before delving into actual cell reproduction and how it works, or rather cell replication and how it works, um, it's really important for us to understand the structure and role of genetic information that's stored within each cell. So a cell's complete DNA makeup is called the genome. Prokaryotes feature a singular circular DNA molecule, uh, and it's in the area we call the nucleoid region. You may remember that from way, way back in chapter three. Um, some also carry smaller circular pieces of DNA called plasmids. Um, these aren't essential, and they tend to carry things like antibiotic resistance. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, um, they possess multiple linear DNA molecules known as chromosomes. Um, these linear strands of DNA are wrapped around proteins. Um, so each species has a specific number of chromosomes present in its cells. Uh, for example, human somatic cells, so those are our non-sexually reproducing cells, just our somatic cells. Um, they contain 46 chromosomes forming pairs. We call them diploid. Um, also, you'll see it written as 2N, meaning that there's two copies of every chromosome. Um, human gametes, like egg and sperm, so our sexually reproducing cells, um, they carry only a set of 23 chromosomes. We call them haploid, 1N. They have one copy of each chromosome present. Homologous chromosomes within a diploid organism have matching lengths of genes at the same loci. That means the same location. Genes are responsible for the various traits that make us up, right? Um, so for example, blood type is determined by three gene sequences, uh, A, B, and O. As diploid cells possess two copies of this chromosome, the blood type results from com the combination of inherited marker genes. So you may be familiar with the term allele. Okay, so combinations can be like AA, BB, OO, or you could have one chromosome that carries A and one chromosome that carries B or O, uh, which would yield different blood types. Um, these slight variations in trait like blood type, and eye color, um, and height, uh, they contribute to the diversity within a species. Uh, and this is true for, for all species, not just for humans. Um, the exception to homologous chromosomes in humans um, are sex chromosomes, X and Y, uh, which differ significantly beyond the minimal um, similarities necessary for gamete production. But we're, we're kind of unique. Not all, not all animals have sex chromosomes. It just happens that some mammals do. Um, for example, really quick, um, turtles use temperature to determine gender, not, uh, not a specific chromosome. All right, thank you for joining me in this brief discussion on the genome. Um, I will see you in our next video where we're gonna start to look at the details of the cell cycle.